Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming and of course Wolong. Today I want to talk to you about weapon types, which are my favourite ones to use in Wolong so far. You might be wondering with that long list of different weapon types, all of the different types of weapons and different movesets and even martial arts attached to them, which is the best? Which is the best scaling? Which is the thing that you should probably use? Well the truth is, it is going to come down to a lot of preference. There isn't outright a weapon that's just significantly better than the rest, because they all serve different functions and purposes due to their moveset. However, what we can do is compare some specifics to one another. For example, the hammers and pole axes have a very similar moveset, so we can compare the two. Today we're going to take a look at the ones I'm most interested in and compare them and come to the conclusion of which I think is best overall. So with that introduction out the way, let's start with my main weapons then, the dual weapons. For these options, we have dual swords, dual halberds, and dual straight sabers. Now, the dual swords and the dual sabers have a surprisingly close moveset. It's nigh on the same, just slightly different, quite vertical, and with a little bit of horizontal swings to it. This stands out from the third option, the dual halberds, which are almost entirely vertical with a bit of thrusting to them. Out of the three of them, I think the dual halberds have the least kind of AOE or wide reach potential because of that. I know that's not necessarily a bad thing for single target DPS, it is a bit awkward for group combat, where you're having to focus on one target and you can't kind of cleave through multiple unless you're relying on certain martial arts you might have available. Out of these three weapons though, I think the general idea is to buff up as fast as you can with any version of that. Usually that's going to be a wizardry buff, I like to use lightning in my build, but an ideal element that the enemy, say a boss enemy, is going to be weak to. Buffing up and hitting many times consistently, applying that affliction to them, that element, and maximizing your damage by by having really fast attacks and benefiting from the element you've got on your weapon. So any three of these is going to work for that, it's going to be really strong. Personally, I really like the dual swords because of their slightly more vertical and horizontal moveset compared to say the dual halberds. Thanks to that, I'm able to actually reach a bit wider and catch enemies out with that. And it lends itself, interestingly, to a bit of wizardry. I was surprised to see that dual sabers had a very similar moveset to the dual swords though. I would expect them to basically be exclusive exclusively thrusting based, where halberds are more vertical, where swords are more horizontal. That would make a lot of sense to me, but it's just not the case. They're very similar to the dual swords. So I find them somewhat interchangeable. It just comes down to which virtues are best scaled with that weapon type, what kind of build you're looking for. Ultimately though, having two weapons that attack really quick, that are buffed up with an element, say a boss is weak to, and going to town, that works great. And say with the dual swords or dual sabers, you're able to find a martial art that allows you to evade to the side and spin on target, which will hit many, many times super quick, and that is how I'm destroying bosses, kind of chainsawing them down using that. It's very fun and very effective, and these are my favorite weapon types because of that. Next though, we need to talk about another one, the staffs, which are Josh's favorite weapon type. He made a whole video about this and how you can get them very early in the game, and why these stand out from the other weapons, and why I'm talking about these over, say, glaives or halberds, is because when you're just attacking, you seem to move really far forward constantly. Now, new players are going going to probably be overwhelmed by all the different systems and everything going on, and having a weapon that basically glues them to the target they're trying to hit, even the lower level enemies as you progress a level, can jump around and be a bit evasive. So having a weapon that just jumps forward as part of its basic light attack combo, and has this great jumping slam as a spirit combo after that, it works really, really well, and can be quite an effective crutch for a new player who is just learning the ropes of the game, which is why Josh made a video about exactly that. Staff scale pretty damn well with wood and metal metal though, so when you're spamming up your wood virtue, you're gaining a lot of health, making you quite survivable. This furthers this idea that staffs are actually a great beginner weapon, as any weapon that scales well with wood would be. They also scale generally well with metal though, which means you can lean heavily into wizardry, making the most of magic, while using a staff like this. So I do think the staffs lend themselves to new players, are quite forgiving, especially with how they glue themselves to the enemy, chasing them around, which is really great in a boss fight. Next we should talk about how hammers and pole axes because this is a weird one. They're mostly the same weapon and function and moveset. Essentially what you're going to get, no matter which you use, is a slow, heavy hitting weapon with pretty damn impressive damage per hit, but of course that's at the cost of slow attack speed. Personally, I was hoping the axe would use some kind of chopping motion or, you know, moveset, but both of them seem to have the same swinging and slam down sort of attack, where you're swinging around you in quite a wide arc and then slamming down, especially with those spirit attacks, especially in combination. This this is great for sticking to a target and hitting them with very heavy hits that will, as spirit attacks do, go through guard. Considering both 
scale with similar virtues, this slower, heavy-hitting playstyle will actually fit well with either weapon. It really depends on which you prefer then when it comes down to how it looks and how it feels to use. For me, I prefer the hammer over the pole axes just because both of them seem to have, like I said, a hammer moveset. I guess with the pole axes, it's going to be very heavy metal at the end of that stick, so there's basically using it like a hammer anyway. Both scale really well with earth generally though, and if you level that up quickly, you'll be able to put on heavier armor without fat rolling. Still able to counter, thankfully, because of that. Having the heavier, better armor will also protect you better, so that will allow for the trading you'll probably be doing, especially in boss fights, because with the slower hits, it takes longer to land them, so you probably end up exchanging health to land those big hits. Being able to protect yourself with better armor and other methods is going to be a good idea then, so it makes sense that the hammers and the polar Axes, scale well with earth. If this playstyle appeals to you then, I would recommend either of them. Personally, like I said, I prefer the hammer. Next up, we have the spears and slashing spears. Between the two, I find myself drawn to the slightly more slashy spear type over the regular spear because, yes, group battles come up often as you're progressing levels. Being able to benefit from even a slightly more wider moveset, well, that's going to have some benefits for dealing with multiple targets. It still has, as a slashing spear, a very thrust-based moveset though, allowing you to stick to a target and reach quite far. Working and weaving in a spirit attack when necessary to sweep wider and catch multiple targets if so. This is where just the regular spear is going to be a bit more awkward because it's basically entirely a thrust based moveset which is obviously logical for a spear. In AoE situations that's just not going to be as effective but not going to be a major issue either. But what I really like about slashing spears is that weapon type seems to lend itself more often to fire virtue. That means that you benefit by leveling that, obviously, increasing the damage of your weapon, but also because you're leveling Fire Virtue, you're reducing how much spirit you need for martial arts. So this potent combination allows Slashing Spears to heavily rely and focus on their martial arts, which are amazing. Some of them allow you to juggle enemies, just hilariously full CCing them, even mini bosses like leaders are vulnerable to that. So it's an incredible thing to be able to just repeatedly do, because it costs less when you're leveling Fire Virtue. So yeah, between the two, I like the Slashing Spear moveset for the AOE options and it's really cool martial arts and it's fire virtue works well with that martial art style playstyle. Last up we have the one-handed weapons. I see the three one-hander options as generally good picks for wizardry focused melee builds. It allows for short and effective combos that have windows to spend your spirit on magic instead of your martial arts. Of the three being straight sabers, swords and curved swords, it once again comes down to preference in my opinion. To my surprise though, the swords are more thrust based than anything else compared to say straight sabers, which I would imagine would be straight poking swords. Straight sabers actually have a surprising vertical moveset, allowing for a bit more wider reaching attacks. But the the winner of the three for this, for me, is the Curved Sabers, thanks to its pretty cool moveset. While like the Straight Sabers, it is a bit vertical, with a bit of horizontal swings in the mix, it's the Spirit Attack that shines out here. Either a forward slash to close the range and gap, or if used in combo after some lights, you'll do this incredible flip forward, which is also a great gap closer as well as a good hit. So the Curved Saber benefits from its wider moveset, again for dealing with groups as you progress for a level, but also for staying on target compared to the others with that gap closing spirit attack. Now all will work well, but I like the curved sabers moveset best for that reason. Further, with the idea of using wizardry in mind, the curved sabers had a lot of weapons that scale great with metal virtue, which is of course ideal to level for your wizardry. It will lower your spirit consumption on spells and keep your spirit sustain higher as well, letting you hold it for longer. It seems to me that curved sabers will kind of naturally lend themselves to that wizardry style playstyle. But if you're looking for a thrust based one hand style of play, just your regular sword is going to do wonders for that. Overall, as you progress the playthrough, you're going to find that you're going to get specific weapons of specific weapon types off of the bosses you defeat. Some of them can be quite interesting, quite unique weapons with unique martial arts, but whatever weapon type you've got your eye on, as soon as you make it to the desert level where you encounter the blacksmith, you're going to be able to trade a bit of copper to get any of the weapon types to play with as soon as possible. Likely, you'll find what you're looking for just off a random drop, be it a random enemy picking it off the ground or defeating a mini boss or a full boss. 
boss. Finding a weapon type you like, then finding a weapon that has a couple of nice martial arts on it that suit your playstyle, that then also scales with the virtue that you have in mind. That's kind of the long-term plan. But this has been my overview of a bunch of weapon types in World Long and a comparison between the ones that I'm most interested in. I hope this look and my reasoning helps you make your own choice. And if you have any further information or advice to do with weapons and weapon types, then you can drop that in the comments because you might just help someone. For now though, I've been Hollow, you've been you, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.